why are you overthinking? You might say that you're trying to solve a solution. You're thinking of answers and answers and answers. And then you get the answer for the solution after a while of overthinking. But you're not. You're just thinking of all the negative outcomes, all the bad things that could go wrong. In most cases, this is what people are doing. You're thinking of, you're making these monsters in your head. I've suffered a million times in my life, most of which never happened. Because all, all this suffering happens in your head. You know, if you think of going to the dentist, maybe you get to the dentist and it is uncomfortable and it is painful for an hour. But you've spent the whole month, a few minutes, hours of each day, worrying, feeling that worry, that dread, that anxiety of going to the dentist. And you've sat there with all these horrible feelings and then you suffer at the end of it. So she was gonna suffer anyway, but you decided I'm gonna spend the month suffering. So why are you overthinking? Why are you thinking so much on this subject? What is your aim? What is it? You say you're trying to get an answer, but you've probably already had the answer. Someone's probably already told you the answer. They've gone, hey, don't worry about it, dentist. You, you, you'll get there, it'll be fine. Last time you went, it actually wasn't that painful, was it? The answer normally comes straight away. And some problems do require an answer. So do your research. Don't overthink about things that you have no control over. That is a big mistake. You're overthinking about all these people. See, I'm looking outside of a window on a park. You're overthinking about all these people and you're going, what does they think of me? What does he think of me? What does she think of me? Do you know what they think? They think the exact same thing. They're looking up at the window of me going, what does he think of me? What does she think of me? What do they think of me? No one's actually looking at me. But the point is, you're overthinking because you think you're trying to solve a problem, but really you just have these insecurities and you want to justify them in any way. You want to justify, oftentimes, say it is public speaking, you're trying to justify the reason you are too afraid to do the public speaking because you're going, they'll think I'm this, this will be embarrassing, I might stutter, I might slip, I might say something wrong, I might embarrass myself, people might laugh. You're trying to justify it because there is that initial resistance that you have for any, everything and anything. If you want to go for a run, you start overthinking, you go, but it's cold, I don't have, my shoes aren't the right shoes, and my technique's wrong, oh, I'm a bit tired. You're overthinking to justify your inaction. But, and I think this is a blessing sometimes, some people seem to be so careless, they don't think, and people say, oh, they're an idiot, they're stupid. Because they don't, they don't calculate their things. They're not stupid because they're not calculating pointless things. You don't need to sit there and go, oh, I got the wrong shoes, I got this, I got that, the weather's too cold, the road's not right, it's too busy. Just go out there, go for a walk. Go for a run. That's the answer. The answer is you can do these things. Nearly all the time the answer is you can do it. No one will care. Just do it. And people always give you this answer. You, you ask a friend or a family and they'll say, just do it, no one cares. And you'll give that same advice to other people. But when it comes to you, you sit there, overthink these things, and suddenly you care about everything. This person at once didn't care what people think, didn't care about this. Now you care about everything. You wanna to go to gym tomorrow, you get up early in the morning, ready to go to gym, but in fact, you just sit there in bed, the alarm went off, and now you're overthinking everything. Oh, I am a bit tired, maybe I should start Monday. Oh, what if it's really busy? What if it's traffic? What if all these people are laughing at me whilst I'm working out? What if I'm not good enough? You would say to everyone else, if anyone said any of those questions to you, you would say, who cares? Just do it, do what's best for you. Be good, do what's best for you. No one, ca no one is even caring about what you're doing. They're focusing on their own problems. Yeah, when it comes to you, you don't take your own advice. And this is the same for everyone. I've been guilty of it. Everyone's guilty of it. But that's the thing. Stop overthinking. Just do. You know, it's quite common for people to live in the past. They spend their time thinking about the past, ruminating on actions and circumstances and situations of past. But the past cannot be changed. Nothing can change about the past. You no matter what you do, no matter how much you think, no matter how hard you think, no matter how much you struggle and calculate 
and interpret the, the past is the past it's gone forever it is gone so it does not do well to dwell on the past When you look back at the past and you cringe, you think about these actions you took, for instance, uh, the reason oftentimes you cringe or you regret is because now, today, the present person that you are, you have grown beyond the person you was and you now think differently. You've grown, you're more wise, you're more empathetic, you're more understanding. And these things you have learned have led you to this point where you can see what you did in the past was wrong. So at the time, you may have thought that these things were okay. You may have thought that um, it was a wise of you to do these things, but the wise man knows he is a fool. No man is truly wise. And you may understand that you may have thought that you were wise back then, but now you are wiser. And that is the reason you cringe on past mistakes. So see it as a positive if you're cringing. See it as a positive that you now know better. You're a wiser person, more understanding. You're more clever. Um, so it is a, that is a positive to these things. And oftentimes we can find ourselves cringing at past mistakes. But we must understand that the only reason we do that is because we understand that they were wrong. Now. If you're dwelling on the past, maybe not mistakes, or maybe not things you cringe at, but actually regret. Maybe you hurt someone. You hurt a loved one, you hurt someone, and you really regret them. You really regret doing this thing. Dwelling on it does not help. It does not help that person. Some people feel like making themselves hurt, inflicting pain towards himself, dwelling on these things um, makes it better. But they don't think that, they feel that. So they start inflicting pain inward um, to try and make up for the pain they've inflicted outwards. And sometimes this can actually result in people inflicting physical pain to themselves to repent for the actions they have took. But this does not help. This just comes about because you think it's necessary or it's, it's part of who you are that you have to self-inflict pain to repent for these actions but the best thing you can do if you've hurt someone the best thing you can do is make up for it some things that you may think are actions or circumstances that you cannot make up for but you can be a better person and that is better than not being a better person. So you, instead of thinking and dwelling on these past mistakes, thinking back at the past and going, oh, I wish I didn't do this, oh, I feel so bad I did this, oh, how, how can I hurt this person? Just try and make up for it, try be a better person, try be nice to that person, try help this person. And over time they may see that you are truly sorry for your actions, but feeling sorry for your actions Feeling sorry for your actions does not make you sorry for your actions. It does not mean that you are sorry. Being sorry means that you are making up, you're doing better, you're no longer doing these things. But if you just sit there and inflict it to yourself, then you're only feeling sorry for yourself. You're not actually feeling sorry for the person. You're not helping the person. And that person will see that. They um, Maybe they expect an apology. Maybe they expect that um, you will no longer act or behave the way that you was, the way that hurt them. So be better for them and be better for you. Um, that's just some things that people might ruminate on. Um, but I just want you to know that no amount of thinking can change the past. You have to try to stop making everyone happy. The reason for this is that it is impossible to make everyone happy. You know, someone might be happy that you help them out and then the other person sees you doing that to them and they feel annoyed that you're helping someone else not helping them 
you can't make everyone happy. It's impossible. You can only do your best to be a good person, following the virtues, uh, being a virtuous person, uh, following, um, be living in accordance with nature. But it is, it is impossible to make everyone happy. And the, if you keep this on your mind, it will tear you apart. You'll be uh, ripped apart trying to make everyone happy. And you won't focus on your own happiness. And like I always say, if you can focus on your own happiness, make yourself more at peace, more whole, then you become a better person to be around for the people you love and the people that are around you. You become better for them. And that is what is best for them. A better person, a better brother, a better sister, mother, partner, friend. So try to make yourself better. What is better? Well, if you have certain problems, certain issues, certain struggles, then try to visit them, try to get help, try to improve yourself, overcome these problems so that you're a more rounded person, a better person to be around. And this is beneficial for the people around you. Now, there is no problem in trying to make people happy. It's a nice thing to do a kind thing for a stranger or for your family member, to show your appreciation for them, show your gratitude for everything they do for you or show how much you care for them. But don't worry about making everyone happy because it is impossible. And usually the more you try to make one person happy, happy then jealousy builds on the other side of the road. This is one thing that I struggled with growing up. Um, I tried to please everyone and it took me uh, many years to realize that it is an impossible task. So just try to look after yourself, look after people, be kind and be good and develop your own character so you're a better person to be around. There are two things that people worry about and that is the future and that is the past. But the only thing we have is the present. That's the only thing that truly exists. So if you are worrying about the future, you've got an exam coming up, you've got a dentist appointment coming up, you've got a challenge coming up, some form of um, obstacle. It does not do well to worry about this test or this challenge, but what does well for a test is to prepare. If you feel like you're worrying about a test coming up um, then you're putting it outside of your control but the thing you can do is study um, you can relax and prepare yourself for this test coming up but worrying about this thing doesn't isn't productive and then in terms of the past you're worrying about the past um, past mistakes past circumstances and you're worrying but the past does not exist the past is gone and cannot be changed all we have remember is the present so it does not do well to worry about these things like Seneca says um, if we worry then we suffer more than we need to um, by worrying about a certain thing, either something that happened in the past, maybe it was bad and it hurt you at the time, or the future, maybe it will be bad and will hurt you at the time, but it only has to hurt you once. But if we worry, we suffer every single day since that thing has happened and every single day until that thing has happened. So we spend our lives suffering when we only need an need to suffer at the time of the thing happening and obviously sometimes things hurt for a long time but we don't need to add to that suffering add to that pain by worrying about things that are outside of our control i think the two clearest pieces of advice two of the easiest to explain pieces of advice that will definitely help with worry number one is to be present that is the one of the best pieces of advice, if we are present in this present moment, then we are no longer worrying about the past or the future. We are just in the present and dealing with what is around us right now. So that is number one. And number two is to love yourself. Uh, it's very cliche to say, but if you love yourself, if you truly love yourself and you understand who you are, the character that you are, then there's no need to worry about the opinions of others. There's no need to worry about the lies that people say because you love yourself. You 
understand the truth of who you are and you show love towards yourself. I think people have the best advice for friends and family and for the people they love. They give them this advice when they're going through struggle, yet they will never give themselves, or most people never give themselves the same advice. So you have to treat yourself like you would treat someone you love. You, sometimes you have to give yourself harsh truths, harsh realities, and um, tough love, as they say, because you have to love yourself. But oftentimes we just push our problems down and we tend to everyone else's. So be present and love yourself. This is two of the best ways and most clear ways to um, deal with worry, to overcome worry, to get rid of this worry. Not get rid of it, but it's two great pieces of advice for worry. Because it does not do well to worry. It does not do well to worry about the past, especially as the past, past is gone. The past has just made us who we are. And all we can do with the past is grow from it, learn from it, use it to become better people. Past mistakes become present lessons. You need to stop doubting yourself. It does not do well to doubt yourself. It doesn't help doubting yourself. You just, if a situation or a challenge is coming up, um, coming up in the future and you have to prepare for it, then doubting yourself just puts you down. It just makes you a worse candidate or a worse person for that obstacle that is coming up. You need to believe in yourself. So this is the way I think you have these doubts in life that you're not good enough, you're not loved, um, you're not a good person, you're not strong, you're not, all, all these things. Then you write down this belief. So belief one is I am not loved or I am unlovable. People, people don't like me, I'm unlikable. Um, write this down, Make write it down on your phone, write it down on a piece of paper and just prove why this is wrong. So I'm not loved, I'm not lovable, I'm not likable. Well, my mum sends me a message most days, sends me a lovely message, or in the morning she makes me a tea and she says, I love you, have a lovely day as I go off to work. Or you know, the person at work brings me a coffee every so often, say good morning, they say nice things, they sometimes bring me a present, a gift, something to cheer me up. People smile at me, friends make an effort to reach out and do something together. Um, your spouse cares for you, they do spend time with you, they want to spend time with you, all these things. So you're not unlikable, yet this is evidence of likability. So you've got to remove this belief that you have that you're not likable. Another self-doubt is you're not confident. So you've got this speaking, um, you've got to public speaking or you've got to do a presentation. You are not confident and this doubt is living in your head you think you're not confident, write that down at the top of the piece of paper and put why you're confident. Every morning you work, walk into your office, you know, there's 40 people, 40 members of staff, you walk in, um, you say hi to most of them, you smile at most of them. That can be quite daunting to a lot of people, greeting all these people, talking to them throughout the day. Uh, you, you go to the shops on your own, you talk to people behind the desk, you say, hi, um, I'd like to buy this. You know, this shows a level of confidence you're communicating with people. Maybe you play football, you know, on a team, there's um, 11 people on a team, I don't know. But you've got your teams, there's a lot of people on the pitch, there's lots of people watching you, and you have to shout, you have to orchestrate yourself, you have to orchestrate the team, you have to teamwork, you know, all these things that, um, require a level of confidence. And in life, many things require confidence. And yes, some people have less confidence than others. So for some people, getting up out of bed, facing the world is a level of confidence because the stoic um, virtue of courage shows that it's not necessarily how brave you are, it's bravery in the face of fear. And if someone's greatest fear is just getting out into the world, then they have this great level of courage because they're going against their fear massively. So if you don't feel confident and you doubt yourself, then that proves that you have levels of confidence and that you can build upon this confidence. Yeah, so you do this exercise. You write down your doubts and you prove them wrong by writing down why they're wrong and then Forget about it, don't doubt yourself, it doesn't help. So for those people who are 
doubting themselves, find themselves doubting themselves. Maybe it's about their looks or about their personality. They find doubt. I just want you to read this. Everything in any way is beautiful, has its beauty of itself. Inherent and self-sufficient, praise is not a part of it. At any rate, praise does not make anything better or worse. This applies even to the popular conception of beauty, as in material things or works of art. So does the truly beautiful need anything beyond itself, no more than law, no more than truth, no more than kindness or integrity. Which of these things derives its beauty from praise or withers under criticism? Does an emerald lose its quality if not praised? And what of gold, ivory, purple, a lyre, a dagger, a flower, a bush? That's from the Meditations of Marcus Aurelius.